They discovered it, they read it, and they applied it. It's the golden thread that connects the titans of the self-development industry. The source that spawned millions of millionaires. The original blueprint to success. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Think and Grow Rich. Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. It's a classic. A classic. <laughs> and I love Think and Grow Rich. I love it. It's, it's right here. I mean, I, it's one of my favorite books of all time. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. It takes a burning desire, a vision, a goal. If you are considering joining a program where you get to learn how to affect someone else's life, there is absolutely no better institution than the Napoleon Hill Institute to help you get to that next level. We are on a mission. We are on a mission to transform lives all over the world. Our goal is to impact billions of lives and to disrupt the self-help and personal development industry. Join us at the Napoleon Hill Institute and let's change the world together. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. I am so grateful to be here and I'm so grateful that I get to introduce one of our incredible coaches today. Her name is Johnny Lloyd, and I'm going to bring her up here in just a second. I just want to say I'm so grateful for all of you for this week, for all of your, your contribution, for taking this seriously. I've read a lot of your forms that you submitted, your definite chief aims, and I'm just so grateful that I get to be a part of this. And I, I loved meeting a lot of you this week. I got to have calls with some of you. And I want to congratulate all of the beautiful new coaches that joined us. And some of you have joined us for mentorship. So welcome to Napoleon Hill Institute. We're in for an incredible journey. We have a lot of people to help. We have a lot of people to help. So when I hear that video that we just watched, it really, it just, it impacts me and my heart because this is truly our mission. Our mission is to improve billions of lives and disrupt the industry. I've been in this industry for quite a while now and I truly want to make a difference. I wanna do it differently and with your help and our coach's help and Napoleon Hill's proven principles, we can really make a big difference. So I wanna invite you and also, if you haven't booked your call yet, book a call with us, we'll tell you what we have to offer. And, be, and now I'm gonna bring up the incredible, amazing Johnny Lloyd. Come on up, Johnny. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cleona, for this opportunity. It is always a pleasure to be here. And more than anything, uh, I have set my intention on absolutely making an impact. So I hope the people in the space and those who watch in the future will do the same because intentions matter. Intentions matter. Did you hear that? And, and one of the things that I love about you, Johnny, and everyone that's watching today, is you operate truly from your heart. Like every, look at that smile. I always say when, when Johnny gets on our calls, we have calls every day. And when she gets on with that smile, she just lights up the whole world. And, and I'm just so grateful that I get to work with you, Johnny. I truly am grateful. Thank you. The privilege is mine. Uh, and I think it's the collaboration uh, that matters. Uh, and as people are joining um, in, whether it be a coach or mentor, remember that family and relationships matter. And you'll see this throughout uh, the presentation I'm going to uh, create. And um, I'm really excited about this. Really excited about this. Me too. I can't wait. So I'm going to sit back here in the background and enjoy. What are you going to teach us today, Johnny? What have you got for our audience as well? I'm going to talk about yes, affirmations for abundance based on Napoleon Hill principles. Oh, beautiful. Affirmations for abundance. Our birthright is abundance. Okay. I'm going to go sit in the back. Thank you so much, Johnny. I will see you in a little bit. Okay, 
we're going to go ahead and get started and we're going to talk about uh, affirmations for abundance uh, and there is a biblical side of it but the biggest thing i want you to get is where are you in this um, the key for affirmations are so critical uh, so many people talk about affirmations however the way that i teach affirmations are um, based on an i am principle uh, so the first two words in the, my affirmations that you'll see is I am, because that's releasing the power of the affirmation in my internal strength and who I was created by, the I am, right? And then I use present tense because I will one day is not an affirmation. I will one day does not make your body engage. I will one day, uh, people say that, but that is not power. Uh, where the power is, is in the nowness of the affirmation. And when you think of an affirmation, remember that sometimes it's like faith. It looks like a lie based on your current circumstances, but it is absolutely the truth. So we're gonna dive in. So the key with this is, as you can see, you can see the two brains interchanging uh, information. Because remember our brain is a receiving uh, a station, you know, it, it automatically gives things out and it receives data. So keep that in mind as you go through this. And what it says is, I am open to receiving. Hear that? Being open to receiving is connected to whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Notice the word can. Being open to receiving, there are some actions that have that need to come after that, right? And then the principle that this connects to, of course, is the principle of visualization and belief. Because what you see, not with your natural eyes, right? Because to be honest with you, all of our sensors, the way we see our five senses is actually in our brain it is not where we think they are, we uh, in the natural. So it's seeing at the deeper level. I remember Helen Keller, uh, Keller talked about the fact that the one of the greatest tra tragedies is not being blind, is a person without a vision. So keep that in mind when you think about visualization, belief, because why would you visualize something and then not believe in what you see, right? So the question is, is I am a magnet for opportunity. I am a magnet for opportunities. I am a magnet for opportunities. The, the key with that is magnets draw things to them. So what is it that you have set your intention for? When it relates to the principle is opportunity often disguises itself in the form of misfortune and temporary defeat. So another way to see it in every adversity or defeat is an equal or greater opportunity. So when you look at it from that perspective, think about it like this. And I'm going to show you an example because I'm one of those people. I don't mind telling you the truth. I've been doing some KDP things and I, I got this and I made this journal. I created this journal. It's an amazing journal. It was an, it's an opportunity. However, it's not right. <laughs> okay? It's not right. So I got a proof and I found out it wasn't the quality that I want to be represented by. So what in your life is an opportunity and you need to level up with other like-minded people in an atmosphere that will cause you to breathe at a higher level at a deeper level, to gain more confidence, to gain more awareness, right? So that you can attract the things you desire. So this is just an opportunity, yes. Had I not tried it, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to what in some people say, well, that's a failure. No, it's not. It's, I figured out, like Edison, that wasn't the way to do it. Remember, he did it 10,000 times to find out, to really get to the definite major purpose he had. So what are you 
breathing about your definite major purpose, the thing that you desire that you need to continue to stress and move forward on. Because the principle here is about the opportunity and every day we're given opportunities. The question is, what are you drawing to you through your affirmation, between what you're saying, what you're thinking, and what you're doing. The other one is, I am confident in my value. Lean in, somebody. I see you. You said, well, I'm confident in other people's value, but you may not be confident in yours. So what if this is something that you desire to say, but you really don't feel it yet? So I'm going to give you a tip. If it's an affirmation that you're using in the present tense, like I am confident in my value, right? But you're not feeling it. Every time you say the affirmation, whatever the affirmation is for, you don't feel it. Then I'm going to give you two additional words to put in front of it. Put in what if. Your brain will, will not fight you on that. Your subconscious mind is saying, oh, she said what if. Or he said what if. Well, what if? but you still kept the I am statement, so you get the power. So once you are more confident in it, drop the what if, right? And you start saying it fully engaged moving forward because that's the power. When you are confident in your value, you don't let other people's opinion of you, one of the six ghosts of fear, you don't let other people's opinion of you sway you into a ravine that you didn't intend to drive into. So the quote is, desire is the starting point of all achievement. When you desire something, you have to be confident in it. And the principle is knowing your definite chief aim. So what is your definite chief aim? What is the thing that causes you to smile that you want to get up in the morning for? And, and then this is a pause. Remember this, if you're currently working and that position that you're working at, the place that you're at is feeding you, hear me, is feeding you, don't despise small beginnings. Be faithful wherever you are doing whatever you're doing for whoever you're working for, because remember, what you do for others, other people are going to do for you because it's a seed, right? So you want to be faithful where you are as you move forward. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. I am embracing my growth mindset. He said, Johnny, how does that lead to abundance? Most of us have at least one, most of us a lot more than one, million dollar idea. But if you don't value what's happening in your head, and you don't put it on paper, you don't make it an affirmation, you don't make it a goal, you don't attach to it, you're not around other like-minded people that are feeding you at a higher level, then you will end up in not a growth mindset. You'll end up in a state where you're stable. Remember when we talk about um, uh, drifting and drifters? This is the deal. If 95% of the people are drifting, they can, be, uh, they can be professionals drifting. They can be all of these things, but still drifting, not walking after their definite major purpose. But when you know your definite major purpose, you know that what you're doing right now is temporary. And you have greater in front of you. So yes, you may have to get up a little earlier. You may have to stay up a little later. You may have to cut down a little bit of the TV or whatever you're doing and be more organized. However, you can do this when you, when you embrace the growth mindset. The quote is, in every adversity, every failure, every heartache carries it with the seed of equal or greater benefit. The key with that is seed. When I was studying, um, they have this place in uh, Alaska, and it's actually a vault. And it's called the Doomsday Vault. Do you know what's in there? Over a billion seeds. That's a B, y'all. It's over a billion seeds in this vault that if something we won't even speak to, 
were to happen, those seeds could restart everything. So that is the power of a seed. Do you hear me? So don't look at your dollars. Don't look at your cents. Don't look at those. They're like, they're too tiny. They're too small. Remember, no matter what it is, whether it be a thought, whether it be a kind gesture or, or word, remember, all of those are seeds. Remember, when you start something and it doesn't go like you thought it was going to go, it just gives you an opportunity to move forward in a different way, to learn, to relearn, and in some cases, to unlearn some things. So the principle is adversity and defeat. The next one is, I am aligned with prosperity. The reason I pause on that is because that was not the way I was trained. I was trained in my faith. I was trained as I was coming up that it said money was the root of all evil. It, that's not the word. It says the love of money. There's another scripture in there that says money answereth all things. So that means if you're sick, you can get a better doctor. If you uh, want to be uh, a philanthropic and go and help other people in other countries or in, in the US, U.S., money helps you do that. Money helps us do the things we need to do for our definite major purpose. Don't discount prosperity. Money is is just a tool that you use. Money doesn't have a brain. It doesn't have, it's not intellectual. It's not emotional. Even though we attach emotions to money and prosperity, we attach things to that. Think about how it connects to your definite major purpose. And how do you attract something if you if you have negative thoughts toward it. That's why this affirmation is so powerful. I am aligned. So what causes you to get rooted to being aligned with prosperity? Because big opportunities may be right where you are right now. And because you're not in alignment, you don't see them. Focus matters, right? And in one of the calls earlier this week, and I think today too with, with uh, Jeffrey did, is we were talking about where I said in my mind, where the focus goes, your power goes. Where your focus goes, your power flows. So when we were doing outwitting the devil today, he was talking about part of what happens is when I, when I give you or give people an opportunity to focus on something, they focus on the negative, that enlarges what you don't want. So focus on the opportunity that you're sitting at right now. And that's connected for me to the Shamgar principle. And I don't, we're not going to take the time to do it because we ain't got that much time, right? <laughs> so we're going to talk a moment about the Shamgar principle. It is about you assessing where you are to start where you are, to use what you have in your hands and do what you can. Because that leads to faithful stewardship. It leads to gratitude. It leads to a new attitude. It allows me to manage what I currently have so that I will show that there's room enough to receive more. There's opportunities. It's building habits where I am. It's not, you know, how I, I used to say, and I have uh, prior clients that used to say, well, when I get the money, I'm going to, or when I, I'm going to, when I, no, start being. Start doing it right now. Build the habits now. And that will allow you to get there much faster. Because it's the principle of concentration. What you concentrate on is what you get an opportunity to receive. Now, this one is a fun one for me. Stepping out of your comfort zone. Wow, do y'all see my brain going poof? <laughs> Stepping out of your comfort zone is something that... Oh, my life has always been around. Okay, first of all, my name is Johnny. Most people expected a man every time they, you know, before all the technology was, they expected a guy to show up, right? So number one, it seemed like they had a disappointment on their face from that. And then I'm a, 
I'm who I am <laughs> authentically, right? So, but once they got a chance to know me, once I got a chance to know them, the power that was brought in the relationship was undeniable. So how do you step out of your comfort zone? Number one, you need to know where your comfort zone is. What boundaries have you established with your money, your time, all of those things? And then how do you go the extra mile and step outside of what's comfortable to you so you can grow from the opportunity that you're in? In order to step outside your comfort zone, you know what that takes? It takes applied faith. Notice I didn't just say faith. It takes applied faith. Actionable. Action packed Faith. Crazy faith sometimes, right? To try something that nobody else will try. So with the Wright brothers, when they had the, the machine that flies, there was a meeting and there was a preacher at this meeting and he said that flying if God intended man to fly, this is one of the statements, I'm paraphrasing. If God intended man to fly, he would have given them wings. And so it was like, it was negative. Like, this is not of God. This is not positive. This is not all of those things. That pastor that was saying those things, believe it or not, guess what? He's the father of the Wright brothers. He was the father. He had no idea what was in his children. So what I would ask you to think and see is not only know what's in you, but take a moment as a coach, as a leader, as a parent, as an employee, wherever your position is, take a moment and hear at a deeper level what's in other people so you can hear where their faith is. And don't dismiss it, especially when it's in our house. And the other thing is, when you're around people that dismiss you, don't take it personally. They just don't know who you are. That's their issue, not your issue. So the next one is, I am a great steward of my time and money. You said, Johnny, why would you connect time and money? Because time and money is connected. There's an intersection of time and money. Most people want to put time over here and money over here. But trust me, it is totally connected. And the quote for that is strength and grow only through continuous effort and struggle. And you say, there you go, trying to give me a struggle. No, not giving you a struggle. Life is full of things that cause us to grow and come outside of our comfort zone. When we come outside of our comfort zone, that stretches us. That stretch feels like a struggle, okay? There are things in my life I wish, in some cases, even though it's not going to happen because it's against the law <laughs> to do that, not the natural law. But I, if I could send somebody to the gym and do my workout, I probably would if I could get the muscles. The problem is, is when I don't do the work, when you don't do the work, you don't get the you don't get the benefit of building the muscle. And know this, if you look at the tree that's there, it's following someone who looks like they're drifting. The tree is the opportunity for growth. The tree that's following each person is is everything that we were but we uproot it. Be consistent. Be intentional. Don't stay where you are as far as in the natural sense. Have your mind grow. Become better. If you're the smartest person in every room you're in, find a new room. Find a new room. Because those rooms you're not growing in. You need someone to challenge you. <laughs> At least I do. I need somebody to challenge me and say, you know, yeah, Donnie, I know you got all this going on and you're mm, whatever. However, people that challenge me are the people that help me grow. Keep that in mind. So then 
what I provided here is actually all the affirmations that I wanted to share. And I'm just going to go through them a little bit again. And I wanted to put them on one sheet so that if anybody wants to take a picture of it, because affirmations work when you work them. So as you take pictures of them and you look at them, you'll see a couple that I did not brief today because I want you to look at them and grow. None of us, all of us need opportunities of growth. So if you look at whether it's creating a secure future, right? Whether it's embodying financial freedom, what does freedom look like to you? Don't let other people define success and freedom for you. Make sure it's based on what you desire. What do you see? And give yourself the bandwidth to shift that as you desire it to be shifted. This is what I'll tell you. Water that's stagnant, that does not move, is a reservoir. And when I was working with, and I still do work with John Maxwell and some things that they do, and I watch uh, and follow him and read books because I'm a leadership person and I love leadership. Um, he says, are you a river or are you a reservoir? Now, both of them are bodies of water. However, one of them has flow. The other one doesn't. I'm going to say it again. Are you a river? Or are you a reservoir? One of them has flow and the other one doesn't. And even when you're a river, there's usually a larger organization or a larger body of water that's, that's actually filling and helping that river flow, right? Um, so consider that. Consider a larger body of water where you're not just sitting as a reservoir where you can actually uh, flow like a river because in the flow, guess what flows? Money flows. Ideas flow. Interaction, mindset, all of that flows. Do you know it's easier to come into a room with a negative mindset and infect the people in the room than there is to come in with a positive mindset? However, let me tell you this, my huge smile and the way I live my life is by choice. What do you choose? Do you choose to speak life by going through an I am statement and driving what's next and planting seeds of promise in your life? Or do you want to stand back and watch other people succeed and then do a commentary off to the side. It is so empowering when you know who you are, you know what you desire, your definite major purpose, and you connect with a group of people that are able to help you drive that. Now, are those people perfect? Oh, no. My pastor puts it this way. He said, there is no perfect people and there's no perfect church. He said, you know why? Because you're in here and I'm in here. <laughs> and that's critical, okay? So no perfect place. No perfect place. But when you set your intention and your goals are clear, you know the decision that you need to make. And you need to step outside the comfort zone to move in that direction. So as I come to a close, this is something that Catherine shared with us yesterday. And I wanted to do that. There's people out there I know laughing and making comments like, are you serious? This thing spoke to me. This lion spoke to me. Do you know why? I'm going to talk about it from the perspective that I see it based on what we're discussing right now. Because it can say a lot of things. But what I want you to see today is this is that wherever you're coming out of, he's coming from a deep body of water, whatever you're coming out of is on you. It may be flowing on top of you and raining, 
Think of it as opulence. Think of it as money. Think of it as prosperity that is literally raining down on you and the joy and the power that that gives you. You're in it, it's on you, and it's continuing to pour on you. So this picture speaks to me. It speaks to me because I don't know what this lion is coming out of. I don't know what you're coming out of. I don't know what's happening in your world. However, I can tell you this, greater is ahead. Greater is ahead. Use the affirmations that I've shared with you. Using affirmations is critical because it shifts your mindset. It causes you to reroute your brain. It causes you to drive yourself to another level. It causes you to tap into your subconscious mind. There's the unconscious, there's the conscious, right? And then there's the subconscious. The subconscious is the place that we have our belief system. And I don't know about you, but everything in my history wasn't perfect. Everything that's probably before me is not going to be perfect. However, my right now, my right today, I need to make the best decisions I know of in my life. Don't be afraid to say, this is the road I'm going to take. Don't be afraid to say, this is the thing that I'm going to do. Don't be afraid because fear should not be something that you're hanging on to to cause you to procrastinate. Procrastination is another sense of not moving forward. So enjoy the water. Come out. Let us see you. Enjoy your next steps in destiny and purpose because you have the power of choice. One of the greatest powers you have is choice. We are not, we are not um, forced to choose. Napoleon Hill talks about in birth, we were given two envelopes. One is when we control our mind and that's all the benefits that come with that envelope. The other one is what happens when people do not have control of their mind. So I encourage you to choose every day and choose wisely. And when our, when we look back and our choices are not giving us the results that we desired, forgive ourselves, forgive others, and move forward. I am Johnny, and it has been a pleasure to be here with you today. I am looking forward to uh, all that is ahead for you. I don't know if there's questions <laughs> uh, coming up. Um, so let me take a peek. So my head, y'all can tell my head is over here like, can she see? Can she read? <laughs> yeah. So if there are any questions, I haven't seen them. But please take the power. And the, the other thing, while I, while I got you, there's one other thing. And then years ago, because I've always done affirmations. So years ago, I shared this. And this is legacy moments, transformation that goes beyond change. So what I would encourage you and say about um, NHI is that even though I've been successful, that wasn't my beginning. My beginning, I was homeless. And I had my daughter on my bed, sleeping on orange shack carpet in someone else's home and had a degree, y'all, <laughs> had a degree going to my good government job every day, right? However, I was homeless. I was what we call the working class homeless, living in someone else's house, maybe on somebody else's floor because I couldn't afford to live anywhere else. And at that moment, I made a decision that caused me to go to Okinawa, Japan. Now, I'm not going to get into that side of it, but I'm going to stay at this side of it. At this side of it, 
when I was laying there and tears were rolling down my eyes, I realized this is where I was, but it wasn't who I was. Affirmations stir up who you are. Not from an external perspective, from an internal perspective. Who you are. So, okay, what is the correct way of doing affirmation, writing or speaking? I love the question and whoever's put it up, thank you. <laughs> so, first of all, I'm going to say both uh, are good. However, let's talk about the way we were created. When you speak your voice and affirmation, it goes deeper into your subconscious mind. It's your voice. And we're very receptive to our own voice. And then the other thing is, uh, it goes the way that our brain utilizes it and responds to it is totally different. So the way that I recommend people do affirmations is in the morning and in the evening. I like it during the day. And uh, yesterday during um, Lion's Den, here, I, I talked about the way she writes out some things, and it was a great suggestion. She says she writes them out three times in the morning, three, uh, six times, and then nine times, right? So if it's something that's really, that you really want to shift on and you want, a, you want it to happen faster, then be more intentional. But let me tell you something that I don't recommend. I don't recommend you do at, you do. 30 affirmations, writing or reading, because a confused mind doesn't buy, and you want your mind to buy into the affirmation. It is consistency and repetitiveness. So if you're working on wealth, if you're working on self-confidence, if you're working on health, I really recommend that you really work in that space and then you move forward. So is there a correct or wrong way to do it? First of all, do it. That's number one. Let's get off the chair and do it. And then my recommendation is if you speak them, when you speak them, you have better results. Okay. Please tell us more about the last affirmation on the list. Oh, the last affirmation on the list. Okay. <laughs> Okay, the last affirmation on the list is, I don't think I have my slides in front of me. No problem, I do. Wait a minute, I can figure it. So the last affirmation on the list is going to be, don't y'all love the way we work this out? We're here to serve. Oh, the designer's original. Yeah. You know what? Thank you so much, Facebook user. Um, the last affirmation on the list is the designer's original. The designer's original is this. Why would I want to be a carbon, a copy when I can be an original? Can I tell you nobody can be Johnny? Like I can be Johnny. And you don't want two of me anyway. <laughs> I'm pretty. <laughs> you don't want two. I don't know if the universe can handle two of me. However, that is the key. A designer's original. I am a Christian, first of all. And I believe that I was that God created me, right? I'm spirit, soul, and body. So part of when you purchase something, regardless of your belief system, when you purchase something, you go back to the manufacturer if there's a problem with the product. Now, usually the first person that comes out, then you end up with a lot of copycats. The copy is not like the original. Nobody can be you. So what I'm saying is that's a self-confidence piece. Being a designer's original is a self-confidence piece. And sometimes, especially when it comes to abundance, when we are in a space, and, and I, I like nice things, I really do. However, I don't let nice things um, form who I am. Does that make sense? I'm going to say this, um, time-related money, right? If a person who's making $20 an hour, and I'm just using this as an example, 
uh, $20 an hour, buys a $100 purse. That's five hours of their life. So I don't judge ourselves by other people's life. Be authentic to who you are and who you were created to be. That's what that's about. Okay. Is there another question? What? When would, <laughs> when would now be a good time? Uh, now? Okay. So there's history, there's our past, our present, and our future, right? Now is our present. We have no promise that we're going to wake up tomorrow morning, even though I'm going to live to be 100 and some, right? I know what my past was, but my past is not looking for me. My past is the ground, and I'm going to call it this, the manure, the fertilizer that helped me to become the person I am today. So the best the best time is now. So for an example, the best time to lose weight is now. The best time to plant a tree is now. <laughs> the, if you want a tree, right? The best time to start looking at your finances, the best time to, to tap into these principles, the best time to connect is now. We get caught up in the how, and that is, that is not really beneficial to us. I'm going to say it a little bit different in a minute. My job is the what. What was I, you know, the what, the when, the where, the why, right? And the, all of those things, the five W's is my function. And when you look at the five, five W's, whether you're working a business or you're looking at the business of, of your life, all of those W's are extremely important. What we get caught up and sometimes cause us to be distracted is we want to know how to do it. If you know the what and you start walking out a plan, don't get married to the plan, get married to the, to the definite major purpose, get married to the goal. I'm going to give you an example. I hope it resonates. For GPS, if I don't put in my system where I want to go, I don't get directions. Any road to get me wherever, because I'm not going to any specific place. So just be careful of that, okay? I saw another question pop up. I hope I answered that. I thought I saw another question pop up. <laughs> Thank you so much, Deepak. I love your name. And I like that motorcycle, by the way, too. Tim, my dad was always okay. <laughs> Thank you. I thought Tim pop up. Let me bring Tim's question back up. My dad would always tell me. <laughs> I was a carbon copy. Um, mm, that's interesting. You know what? I think what our parents or anybody tells us that, um, it's for a compliment. Um, so I'm gonna talk about there's there's this thing I my my daughter, I have a 40-year-old daughter, and people say she's the mini you. Absolutely not really. <laughs> she has a lot of my characteristics, she has a lot of my traits, she has a lot of um I gave her opportunities to think and make decisions. She's a very powerful, innovative, creative person, all of that stuff. But she is not me. She is not me. So, again, me being like someone uh, is wonderful. Okay, so, and the reason I'm, I'm doing this is about designers, go back to the fingerprint. Do you know every all the eight? billion people in the world nobody has the same fingerprint that's unique that's identity identical twins do not have the same fingerprint that's unique that's identity so again 
such a great compliment to be like a parent or whatever. You know, you can somebody can say that. Um, I believe there's a lot of people that uh, we are like uh, the things that we read and uh, build on. And I think all of those things are powerful. However, remember at the very DNA, it's your very DNA that you were created and designed to be original. So never lose that. And so when people will try to form you or to reform you into something that you're not comfortable with, it has to be from a place of awareness on your side. Because if you don't know who you are, if you don't know why you're here, then you're more apt to have the world or outside forces, social media, all of those things that tell you who you are. So just be careful of that and be careful of picking up fear because fear is an element to get people to do things uh, because of the mindset and triggers that we have. So just be careful of that. Is there any other questions or comments? This has been incredible, John. This has been so incredible. And I was just taking notes and um, I loved, especially in your presentation when the tree was running after the the man, like that, that that's gonna stay with me. I hope you all saw that. Like the tree was literally running after the man and saying, come on, let's grow, let's grow. And um, there's, there's a few very important points that you shared today. All of your points were important, but there's a few. I hope you all took notes and you're going to go back and watch this over and over again. So, um, you know, you talked about you talked about applied faith, which is one of my favorite topics. And applied faith is really faith in action in your thoughts, in your words, and in your actions. So. Just like you said, if we say we have faith, but we're thinking the opposite or we're, we're sitting in doubt and worry, no, we don't have faith. We don't have faith at all. And if we're not taking action in faith, then we're, we don't have faith. It's not true. It's not true. And I'm, I'm very passionate about it because it does. It takes, just like you said, as you grow, you're going to build these muscles. If your desires, your definite chief aim is out of the ordinary. And when I say out of the ordinary, I mean the masses are not going for it. It's something you've never done before and most people are afraid to go for. Then you must understand that adversity will come. It will come to grow your muscles and to prepare you, right, Johnny? What advice would you give people that they're going through, they want to go to the next level, they have the desire, but they're not acting in faith yet because the fear is holding them back. What advice would you give them? You know, wow, that's a great question, Cleona. Um, I'll tell you that fear immobilizes you. That's the whole intent of fear, to immobilize you. So, Become, step outside of it and look at this. What do you gain by following or doing what your definite major purpose is? Right? Think about the lies that are waiting on you to go in that direction. Think about the opportunities, right? And then look at, actually, just put an X on the other side. Because we always have something we, other people can tell us. What drives you? Find out what drives you. And when it drives you, get in the car and drive. But do not put it on autopilot. Be intentional. Be active. And remember what you desire because turbulence will, will come. So the other thing is, and I love examples, and this is the way I teach, right? So think about a, a tornado. 
and people talk about the eye of the tornado. Some of you have, that's the way your brain is, that's the way your life is, that's what's happening. It's a tornado, right? And you're saying everything's going to be destroyed. No. Stay in the center of the tornado because in the center is the place of calm. Yes, everything is happening around you. Don't reach out and start touching stuff that don't belong to you. <laughs> don't wish for other people's stuff. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right? Just know what you want and then you go after it. Because when you start grabbing things that do not belong to you, there's always ramifications that happen. So this is the this is the other thing I'll say, Cleona, is know that back to the designers or being original, I have a race to run. To run. It's not your race. I'm equipped for my race. You're not equipped for my race. Hmm. You're equipped for your race. So when you find other people that are that are still running, whether it be a marathon, but they're in their lane, listen to me, it's very important. Don't be crossing lanes. Don't be going outside the lanes because you're going to cause somebody else to get hurt. Or you're going to be hurt. Know your lane because in your lane, guess what? No matter what you see before you or behind you, you win when you stay in your lane. Oh, wow. You may trip, you may struggle, whatever may happen, but you win as long as you stay in your lane. And people say, when is fine? And, and I'm going to say this if I may add. They said, uh, people have had failure. And this is what I'll tell you. I was reading a book, and I don't know because I read a lot. So this is what the guy said. He said, failure never happens until death. Mm -hmm. Failure doesn't happen until you're no longer able to do anything. Because as long as you're able to do something, you get an opportunity to make a better decision to move forward. And, and then I have been in um, the personal development area for a long time and uh, training and leadership and all of that. However, being with a group of like-minded people that cause you to, to think outside, to have fun, because we danced yesterday. <laughs> we danced yep. yesterday on the Lion's Den. So <laughs> there are things that we do. There's fun that we have. You want people to enjoy life with. That's going where you're going, not excluding other people. But sometimes the best thing we can do for other people is to win. Mm. So that's what I would say. Oh, I love that. Did you hear that? The best thing you can do for others is win. Be an inspiration. Stay in the middle. Stay focused. This is some powerful advice, Johnny. I'm so grateful. So... We have, there's a few other things you Thank said. You. I want to I foot stump one more thing that you said. And I, I really want, I want to make sure whoever's watching this that you, you get what she said a few, a few lines back. Most people don't get started because they want to know the how first. Johnny told you today, and so did I this week, and so did quite a few others, the how will reveal itself to you. You must get married to the what and the why. The, the W's that she was sharing, two of the W's that I feel are the most important is what and why do you want it? And the how and the way will be shown as you move forward and you progress in faith. This is the formula. This is the formula. So I, I want to thank you so much, Johnny. What advice would you give to anybody who's considering joining Napoleon Hill Institute? Um, what advice would you give them if they want to become a coach with us or join one of our study programs or coaching programs? Well, I would encourage you to, um, to look at where you are and move forward. Because even though you may be successful or doing something that you love, you may already be a coach. However, having a group of coaches, having a group of like-minded people 
is like a mastermind. Remember the first slide I, I put out and I have two people's brains coming, but all the hands are under there. That's what the Institute reminds me of is having a hand to help you. Hands that are from every denomination, all global. That is the key. The key is, is to set your intention and to move forward. And so this is what I'll tell you. There are some things I did, I had to do afraid. I had to do afraid because I had to look fear in the eye and say no. That I knew that this is the thing for me. Let me take the reason I joined. The reason I joined, I was already certified at the foundation. I already John Maxwell, you know, all these people, right? <laughs> But I was looking for a place that I could use my intuitiveness, that I could fully come to the table, right? And this became that place. It became a movement for me. It became something that drove me and I get energy from. And let me tell you, this, it, whatever I thought I was when I started, and I'm putting quotes around there, whatever I thought I was when I started, I have become a better person professionally mentally physically financially i have become better because of that now part of that has to be on you there's no magic pill if there's if there's a magic diet pill y'all need to let me know but i thought we have to do the work right but we still have to do the work in the organization however I have become such a better person. There are some things I didn't know that was happening that Fatima told me in the boot camp and other people taught me and Cleona, all of us, the books that we're reading. So this is what I'll say again, move forward, move forward, move forward. Do not delay, make a decision and then Set your intention and move forward in your best possible uh, way that you can do that. That's what I would say. Mm, that's perfect. This has been incredible. Johnny, I'm going to go back and watch the replay and take notes. And I I'm gonna, already took two or three pages. I'll take more. But um, I love the affirmations. And when I used to work for Bob Proctor, he said, anything you say after I am, you become. So so really pay attention to what Johnny gave you today. And I want to thank you from my heart for all of the incredible service that you give to the Napoleon Hill Institute and to the world. So thank you, Johnny. Thank you. I decided to join NHI, Napoleon Hill Institute, because... I wasn't aware that I was looking to belong, to have a belonging and something better than where I was. And when I joined Napoleon Hill Institute, immediately I felt like I had anchored myself to something bigger than I could have ever imagined. This is a place of authenticity, it's a place of purity and I can't think of any other place that I would rather be in terms of learning how to be a coach in the personal development industry. What's different about NHI is that all our hearts are connected. I really feel what's inside each and every single individual in NHI. As soon as I hear someone speaks, I know what's in their heart and mind. And I can feel it. The first word that I would sum up NHI, Napoleon Hill Institute is, I would say, disruptive. We are disruptive. It's not a negative disruption. It's a disruption that will impact every area of your life. We are disruptive. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt that the leaders in this organization, they're in the study, they're in the growth, they're in the learning every single day. We see them on the calls. They're teaching us how to be coaches, how to reach the 8 billion people that we want to reach. I drifted for a very long time, for a very long time. And the worst part is that it was an addictive kind of drift. I'll say I was drifting. 
So you can be intellectual and drift. You can be successful and drift. You can be spiritual and drift. It's only when I decided to have a mentor who steered my way of thinking into channeling my feelings to a harmonic melody of life that I managed to embrace a new vision with a new feeling into encompassing a new blueprint that shaped the new reality that I live today. There's a vibration in a, in a, in a rhythm that we have that is like no other organization in the world. And I think that's the beautiful thing about this community is that we're all one, we're all equal, and everybody, everybody is supporting each other.